I've been waiting for this one because yeah. we're going to do this all season long. We might not ever have one that's 59 to 10. Yeah. In the NFL, like this just doesn't happen. The Ravens beating the Dolphins. No. 59 to 10. And for a little perspective, I, I went back and looked at the college scores from the weekend. Yeah. Right. So Alabama played New Mexico State. New Mexico State is as hapless a team traditionally in college football as there is. They didn't outgain New Mexico State the same way that Baltimore outgained Miami. Like, how? How? Did that happen in the NFL? Yeah, it's it's very rare to see it. It was uh, an ass whooping of all ass whoopings, and it, it, it's um, one when you're really good at something, it forces your hand. And I, I say this to Mike a lot: the really good offenses do one thing really good, then it makes the defense go, "Whoa, we have to stop that." What's and the then one you thing? can do things off of that, right? right exactly. You build the, the, off of that. You build off of that, right? Oh, they're trying to take away. Yeah. Oh, we're New England and we throw to Gronk on third down. Oh, you want a double Gronk? Well, we have 90 million ways now to screw you with Julian Edelman, right? right? right. Or, oh, you want to take away Michael Thomas in the middle of Sean Payton? Oh, that's fine. You're you're one on one with Alvin Kamara? Okay. Oh, that's that's fine. That's... I got a million plays for Alvin Kamara. Right. Go ahead, take away Michael Thomas, my bread and butter. That's what a good offensive coordinator does. And. The Ravens' one thing is their power run game, and it scared the crap out of the Dolphins. Now, one, the Dolphins' team's not good. Let's just, let's just put it right there. They're in a rebuild mode. They're trying to win these games. It's going to be hard for them to win these games. They're not good. Their best player is Xavier Howard. Their second best player was Laramie Tunzel, and he's not there anymore. Yeah. So it's not going to look good always. First play of the game, it's unbalanced line to the right, okay? It's Mark Ingram, 49-yard gain. First play of the game. Right? And you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, all they talked about was their run game and how awesome it's going to be. And the Dolphins knew about it and they got gashed for 49 freaking yards on the first play of the game. Yeah. Okay. The next drive, maybe the second or third play of the drive, it's a fake RPO. And now I thought there was no free safety. When I watched on TV, I was like, are they playing in this defense with no free safeties? Like, are they kidding me? Right? That was what I – and I even, I even said it on the Monday show. I was like, I don't think there was a free safety in some of these plays we saw. Well, I was wrong, and this is why the film's awesome. There was free safeties. But the free safety, and this is not on him, was told to be extra aggressive. So the first touchdown pass you saw to Hollywood Brown, which was the slant yeah, on the left yeah. side, it was an RPO. And he – uh, Lamar Jackson got the ball. He read the defense. He saw the linebackers flying with the run fake. He probably saw the safety flying downhill to stop it as well because I'm sure Brian Flores said all week, we're outmatched there. Yeah. Hey, free safety, I need you down there as an extra body to help the run. Well, bam, okay, Hollywood Brown, slant, touchdown, boom. Okay, you'd think, okay, well, they might have to rethink this game plan here. Let's rethink this. Um, no. Third drive, third drive, it's – it's a quarter-quarter half element here now. And it's a passing situation. They're playing three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Okay, they double the receiver to the left to stop any single cut, out route, or comeback, or anything like that. But they leave Minka Fitzpatrick all by himself at the 25-yard line. And, oh, yeah, just... Well, we just want you to cover one of the fastest guys in college football last year. It's only 53 yards and 75 yards it. behind you. Yeah. No problem. No issue. So... Hollywood Brown gets free access. Nobody touches him coming off the line of scrimmage. By the time Minka Fitzpatrick starts backpedaling, looks at the quarterback, looks back, Hollywood Brown's on him. He's gone. It's over. It's, it's the play's already over. Touchdown. You know, and there was just a lot of that. But the big thing was they never adjusted the free safety play to say, slow down and just play free safety the way you're supposed to play free safety mm -hmm. now. I mean, Lamar's hot. The passing game's hot. He's an NFL quarterback. And we need to readjust. I'm all for it at first. If you want to start a game and go, I want to see Ma Lamar Jackson beat me with the pass, yeah. that's cool. And that's what you have to do at times. you got to force it and say, let me see you beat us another way. But once they do it yeah. once or twice, yeah. you have to go, okay, they got us today. They right. know what they're doing. Let me go to plan B and readjust how we're going to organize this on the defense. And that never happened. If you actually kept stats on whatever the easier day in practice is right. toward the end of the week where you're going against – the guys who were backups in third string, the numbers wouldn't be that good against the backups if, oh, they, actually, no. if they actually kept them. No, I used to right. call Arena Football League games at NFL Network when we had them on Friday nights. Yeah. And every now and then you'd catch a quarterback who had more touchdowns and interceptions. But it doesn't happen in real football. Right. He had more touchdowns than he had incompletions. I know. And then RG3 came in and played well too. So 
Moving to the next thought about yeah. the Ravens offense. Right. They do the one thing great. They've got a quarterback who's getting better. Clearly, getting better, definitely. And has a different skill set than a number of the other quarterbacks. Right. What will the good defense do differently against Baltimore based off of what they saw in week yeah, one? Yeah, okay. This is I'm glad this is a good question. Now, Baltimore, I mean, we know they're all the old lines, hulking, huge, overpowering unit. Hey, if Hollywood Brown can look like that, that's going to stress some defenses out. I mean, mm -hmm. the defensive coordinators are going to be, they're going to go sleepless when they play Baltimore now, when they see that, because they're going to go, damn, not only have to worry about this run game, but leaving my corner one on one with that damn Hollywood Brown is scary. Right. They're not going to like that. They have a nice little formula. It doesn't need to be complicated. I mean, Miles Boykin at receiver, Willie Sneed the other one, and then they have three good tight ends to really, they can play smash mouth or spread it out. But this is what I would do. First off, when you play man-to-man -man like that, and I said this a little with Mitchell Trubisky and, and the Green Bay Packers because it happened a few times. When you play man-to-man, -man, it's a get-out-of-jail free card for the quarterback mm -hmm. at times. You know, people think, oh, we're going to make it tough on them to get completions. No, you're really making it easy on them. There's nothing to read, right? right. Oh, I'm blitzed. Oh, okay, well, there's a guy one-on-one. -on -one. Let me throw a back shoulder or a 50-50 right. ball, and maybe my guy comes up with it. Maybe get it. It's a get-out-of-jail free card. You're no longer making the quarterback decipher coverage and then having to make pinpoint throws into tight zone coverages, right? It's, oh, there's no safety in the middle of the field, and I get to throw a post we just talked about. Let me just throw it high right. and throw it out there, and my great athlete will get it. Oh, you know, it's man-to-man -man coverage and I'm getting pressure. Oh, there's Miles Boykin on the outside. The DB's covering him man-to-man. -man. His back's turned. Let me just throw a ball over there and see if my guy can adjust to me. You're really making it easier. So that is, I think, what we're going to see more and more. If I'm playing Baltimore, I'm not letting him get the get-out-of-jail-free card. I'm playing some more creative zones. I'm keeping my back guy's eyes at the line of scrimmage, too, mm -hmm. to where they can rally and make a tackle. Right. You know, that's the greatness of, like, the Seattle scheme mm. a little bit is because it was eight guys at the line of scrimmage, but they were playing zone. So their eyes were kind of always on the quarterback. So, oh, you want to run it? We're going to all converge on the run. Oh, you want to throw a short pass? Oh, we're all you, you can throw the short pass. You might get four yards, but we are going to tackle you as soon as you catch it at four yeah. yards. I would do more of that stuff on Lamar Jackson. It's actually some that confusion. Makes sense. Yeah. Confusion. Some make them read it. before the snap. Right. Make them read it. Make some pinpoint throws. Yep. Not just let me ooh, throw a ball up into a spot and my guy will get it. That's a great point because the aggressive man works when they get after the quarterback and get to him with the blitz. If you don't get to him right away. You're in deep crap. You, you summed it up very well. Right. There's no deciphering what's going on back there. You hope you have an extra second and then you hope you throw an accurate ball, but you're not back there really reading a coverage and making a tough decision. No, right. Just like, showing courage by standing yes. in and hopefully throwing a good ball. That's why I want to say, like, with the Sam Darnold and Dad, when we went back there, because Dad's like, Sam Darnold's feet are all over the place. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's, he's having a little pressure, and the Bills are playing these, what I, we never got to really talk about. What was the damn phrase I used? The, uh, the it was simplicity. Game plan specific simplicity. Game plan specific. Yes. Because we all know what cover four is, right? Corner, corner, two safeties all have a quarter. They have a quarter of the field mm -hmm. from where they are and back. But what they do is they game plan their quarters on everybody. So in training camp, hey, this is quarters coverage. This is quarters coverage. This is quarters coverage. Okay, now we're playing the Jets. And this week, we got quarters coverage down. I still want to run quarters, but we're going to run this week's version of quarters. There's going to be a rule tweaked here or there by a guy just according to what a team does on the game, game plan wise on the other side of the ball. That's what I meant by my right. game plan sim simplific, uh, simplicity Specific that I can't say. You know you what I'm saying, whatever. Backing up to the, to the Ravens and the Dolphins, yeah. the, the 49 point win right before we move on from that one the only wrong answer here is both you can't say both okay you gotta pick one yeah so that ass kicking yes. was more because of the Baltimore offense or the Miami defense <sighs> man that's a good one because I, I do want to say both you're right that's a uh, I'm going to say it's more I, I'm mm, I'm gonna say more because of the Miami de defense okay I am I right. am. As much as I really liked that right. damn. Yeah. But yes, they are, were completely outmanned. And they had issues because they know they're not that good up front on the defensive side of the ball to where they had to do things they didn't want to do with the rest of their defense because there was an area where they knew they were way outmatched. So they had to put more eggs into that one basket to stop it. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.